Sharpening a Japanese pruning saw is quite possible when you know how. In the next five minutes, you'll see how this is done, what tools you need, and where to get the diamond shaped file you need. There are two mostly little known tips for sharpening silky saws that will have you resharpening your silky like a matate. A matate is a Japanese master sawyer. Well, that's my interpretation of it. And if you ignore these tips, you will be missing the secret sauce that makes sharpening Japanese tri-edge pull saws easy. These tips will not only make you look like a master of the file, but will also save you time and dollars by keeping your saws insanely sharp and by not buying replacement blades when your sagoi, your hayati or katana boy blade is not cutting like it was brand new. And in this video, I'm also going to show you how to make a simple tool that will give you all the confidence you need to become a master of the file. Before we get to the filing and the tips that will make you a matate, you need to know a little theory about a tri-edge tooth and teeth that are set and teeth that are non-set. This is a tri-edge tooth, so called because there are three edges on it that do the cutting. Over time, all of these edges need filing. For the first two or three sharpens, you can get away with just sharpening the top edge of the tooth, which is marked letter A in the previous diagram. However, after filing a few times, the tooth will become shorter, and the saw will not cut or clear the shavings as quickly and as neatly as it did before. It is time to file the gullet angles. The special diamond-shaped file not only sharpens the tooth, it cuts down into the blade, making the tooth taller and taking that part out of the blade. You can keep doing this for quite a while until the blade has been reduced in height and you've strayed too much from the appropriate angles for the cutting teeth. Tip number one. After countless YouTube videos, I've found some clips from Japanese and Korean sites that show how they clamp the saws in a vise made from plywood and learn it to help with obtaining the appropriate angles for filing. It's a simple device. There's a piece of timber tapped into the base so that the top clamps the blade tightly. Some have a strip of foam glued to both sides at the top to prevent the blade from slipping. Filing the gullet. As you can see, once the blade is clamped, it is a simple matter of filing in one direction, maintaining the tooth angle while sharpening. Notice that he lifts the file, ensuring that he only files the metal on the push straight. Don't saw the file forwards and backwards across the tooth. Notice also that he files each alternate tooth, every second one and moves the clamp blade along as he progresses down the blade. This rate retains his muscle memory and helps with maintaining the correct filing angle. So when every second tooth has been filed, the blade is reversed and the other side is filed. Sharpening tip number two. This tip is for filing the top angle on the blade. Notice he's using a modified hacksaw blade as a guide for the file so that it doesn't slip onto the next tooth. It also helps with maintaining the correct filing angle as it gives you a line plumb with the blade it is easier to measure the angle. The top angle does most of the cutting and is the one you can file a couple of times before attacking the gullet. When filing all three angles of each tooth, file the two gullet angles first and then file this top angle last. This is important. Again you will see that he's filing every second tooth. When he has done them all on one side, he will turn the clamp and do every second tooth on the other side. When it's finished, he'll remove the blade. Here's another way of holding a saw with a long blade using a long piece of timber and a couple of big cramps. If you would like to get one of the diamond files, go to arbolab.com.au and if you have a go at filing a silky saw, please send us a video to silkysaws at hotmail.com. Thanks for watching.